Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and welcome to the show, y'all. Listen to me. Now, look, they just come from the ultrasound, the doctor's appointment, right? It's real. He know he has a baby coming. He ain't got no money. He ain't got no money. He don't know what he's going to do. He don't know how he's going to take care of another child. Plus, he can't run the risk of pissing her off and she go to the human resources department at the penitentiary and tell the day in a relationship and she's pregnant behind he is her subordinate. He works for her. He is her boss. She's his secretary. He's in a pile of mess. And she's got all the leverage. All the leverage. Well, let me correct that. Her real boyfriend, the gangster, has got all the leverage. And listen. He's got plans. he got big plans. He wants to create a smuggling operation that cannot be interfered with no matter what prison operations are taking place, whether it be a lockdown, a shakedown, or anything. He has to do this to be successful at what he's doing. And don't get it twisted, y'all. Don't get it twisted. It's a dangerous game that he's playing because he's playing with somebody's life. But see, when you're a part of this lifestyle, that's why I say you don't, you don't want this lifestyle. When you're a part of this lifestyle, you can't care about what somebody is going to feel and how it's going to affect their life. You got to be cold as ice. You don't want this. Go to school. Do something worthwhile instead of using and manipulating people. But let me get back to the story, okay? Listen. Now that she's got him, her boyfriend, her real boyfriend, tells her, look here, it's time to set him down and have a real conversation with him. It's time to go on and drop, drop the boom on him and tell him what he is going to do. But see, she said, look, we got to finesse this a little bit. We don't need to go hard on him like that. We got to make him feel like he's a part of the family. And he, her boyfriend, he listens to her and he's like, so what you got in mind? She said, man, let's make him one of us. Let's make him a gangster. He started laughing. He said, you tripping. He ain't finna become no gangster. This man is too old for that anyway. He been law enforcement his whole life. He ain't finna do that. She said, he gonna do what he need to do to be able to take care of this baby. And then her boyfriend said, hold up. We gotta make sure something's understood. Even though he's the dad of this baby, he ain't finna be in your life. And she says, I know that. I know that. But he need to know what's happening. This is part of it. She said, we can present this to him so he'll understand and he'll accept it. What choice does he have? But we got to make him feel like he's part of it. But that's going to make him go harder. Her boyfriend, he's against the whole thing, right? Because he's starting to sense something else is going on with her. But he goes along with it. He goes along with it. He said, okay, then. It's what you do. When you tell him to come over tonight and he comes over, I'm gonna talk to him. And I'm gonna break this thing down to him so he understand what the business is. And once he understands what the business is, then I'm gonna give him the opportunity. But I'm telling you, he ain't gonna take it. She said, he gonna do it. Cause when you get off the phone, I'm gonna talk him into it. He said, okay. Let's try it. So she, she makes sure he comes over that night. And when he gets over to the house that night, she says, I got something to tell you. And you ain't going to like it, but you're going to have to learn to love it. And he's looking at her like, what's going on? And he sits down on the couch and he's got this serious look on his face. And she's got this serious look on her face. She picks up her phone and she said, she dials, she texts 911. And then all of a sudden, the phone rings. And he said, yeah, what's up? Then he looks at her, she looks at him, she looks down at the phone, and she says, he's here. And then Cap says, who is this? And he tells him his name. 
But when he says it, he says, inmate, such and such. Okay? And he, the captain looks at her. And she looks at him and he says, what's going on here? And he says, the gangster on the phone, he says, listen, you done got my gal pregnant. And I know you need money. He cut straight to it. Ain't no sense in playing around with this. This is hard cold stuff here, y'all. It's kind of like ripping a Band-Aid off. Don't play. So you got to go hard. You got to go straight at the cap. He said, look here. You done got my girl pregnant. And if you want to make sure this thing don't blow up in your face, you got to do what I tell you to do. But then she interjects. She said, look, wait a minute. I thought we had it understood that we're going to bring him into the family. And then the captain looked at her and said, bring me into the what family? What are you talking about? He pissed off, y'all. He pissed off. He confused. He don't know what's going on. He wants to leave. But he, if he knows if he leaves, everything is gone. He loses everything. He loses everything if he leaves. And he knows this. So he tells her, he said, look, stop playing with me and tell me what the business is. And she told him, she said, look, when I came to the prison, I came for one reason and one reason only. Now he's starting to see it. He ain't slow. And he leans back on the couch. He said, what was that? And she said, to get you. She's looking at him. And then she picks up the phone. And she says, tell him the rest of it, baby. Now the captain looks at her. I'm telling her, look at his face twisted up. He really want to shoot off, but he ain't, he ain't trying to go to the penitentiary. He ain't going to be able to explain this to no jury. And he's thinking. He's thinking, I got to be cool. I got to stay calm. So the gangster tells him, he said, look, I know what's up with you. You like these females. And I ain't messed up with that. I ain't messed up with that. But the problem we got now is that my gal is pregnant with your baby. And she your subordinate. And I need you to do some things for me. But I don't want you to do them because you scared of what might happen. It's only one way that we can do this right to where you will be a part of what we're doing and you can benefit from it as well. And he said, benefit how? I said, I'm talking about getting money. And the captain like, no, 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 I ain't into none of that. He said, hear me out before you say that. Because I know you got alimony you paying. I know you got child support you paying. And you just went through a divorce. And now you got a new baby on the way. He said, hear me out. So the gangster started breaking it down to him and telling him how he can get these drugs. And he can bring these drugs in through his gal and all this and that. And the captain told him, he said, look here, man. Won't none of what you said work? And he said, why won't it work? He said, because when, the, when we come in now, we go through an x-ray machine that looks at everything inside our bodies, on our bodies, and everything. And if she got some drugs on her in any way, shape, or form, in her, around her neck, whatever, under her titties, anything like that, they're going to be able to see it. And he said, but don't you control who sets and who works where? you the shift captain. You can assign who you want to assign, right? He was like, yeah, I do all of that. But... I can't put somebody on there and tell them to ignore the job. He said, no, that ain't what I'm asking you to do. It's not what I'm asking you to do. He said, I got somebody that I want you to put on first shift to work the x-ray machine. Now the captain looked at her and he said, what have you gotten me into? And she just looked at him and shrugged her shoulders. She said, I'm listening to him. This is my man. And we gangsters. This is what we do. And then that's when he it hit him. He said, so you trying to bring me into that lifestyle? Y'all gangsters? And her boyfriend on the phone said, yeah. But listen to me. This is what we need you to do. Put him on first shift. Let him work the machine. Train him how to work the machine. And when she comes in, he just going to have the machine off. And she can walk right through he said, nah, they'll know. Then they start asking all kinds of questions. They're like, okay, so if she gets on the machine and it shows that she's got something in her, who knows about it? And then he says, I'll know. 
He says, I get a notification. The wardens get a notification. They're notified if something like that happened. He said the only way around that is that she would have to tell him that she's pregnant. She'd have to have a note from the doctor. And her boyfriend on the phone said, well, duh, she's pregnant. We can push it until the pregnancy is over. That's how we got to do this thing. So the captain leans back on the couch, lets out a sigh, because he knows that he ain't got too many options. So he tells him, he says, how much money are we talking about? He said, it just depends on what all we can bring in. He said, and I'm going to figure that out later. He said, but all of us can make money. And the captain told him, I'm going to need some time to think about this. And he stood up and he said, I'm gone. And he walked out the door without saying bye. When he got in his car and he started up his car, he sat there in the, in the driveway for a second without pulling out. And then after about two or three minutes, he put the car in reverse and backed on out. And he drove away. She sat there on the phone talking to him. She said, that didn't go good. And her boyfriend told her he ain't got no choice. He ain't got no choice but to do this. Because if he don't do it, he's hit. He's hit. And she started to feel sorry for him. Because, you know, even though she was in for a penny, in for a pound, she got hit. A baby in her, and that baby belonged to him, and she, her hormones are changing. She's starting to feel something, but it ain't what she thinks. It ain't love, but she's starting to feel sorry for him. She went to this extent to do it. She starts to think about her boyfriend and how he convinced her to do this, and he, she's thinking that he ain't straight either because you, he convinced her to have a baby to get pregnant by somebody else to blackmail him, and she's having a hard time with that now. Her hormones are all over the place. And she tells him, she said, we got to figure out something better to do. She said, even if we are able to do this, it's only going to last as long as I'm pregnant. He said, we'll think about that later. Then she started to realize that he didn't care nothing about her either. But this is the life she chose. But she didn't choose this life for her, her baby. She didn't choose that. She didn't want a baby, but now that she has a baby, at first it was all about a car, but now it's real. It's growing inside of her. Things are changing. Things are changing. And he can tell. He can tell things are changing. So when he gets off the phone with her, he calls his other gal. And he tells her, look, we might have a problem. Now, she's been aware of all of this the whole time, what's going on, right? And she was cool with it because, see, she wants him for herself. And now that the other one has a baby in her stomach by somebody else, she know that he going to lean on her more. So she tells him, she said, look, after she had a baby, we can find another way. By then, we'll have a captain. We won't need her no more. We can convince her to quit, get a job, do something else. She under me. She got to do what I say. And now let me explain something to y'all about that. See, when it comes to gangs, right, you have the men and the women, right? And the women have the same type of structure as the men. It's somebody that leaves them. You understand what I'm saying? Just like it's somebody that leaves the men, right? Now, the gangsters real boo is head of the women. Now see, his gal that's pregnant with the captain's baby, she thinks that she's his real gal. I'm telling y'all, this game is twisted and wrong. Twisted and wrong. Don't nobody care nothing about how somebody might be feeling about it. It's the end result that matters. It's real twisted, real ugly nasty. You know what I'm saying when I say ugly, nasty? Ugh. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So she tells him, look, I'll make sure that she stay in line and do what she need to do until after the baby's born. And then she gonna quit. And then we gonna make sure the captain keep doing what he's doing one way or another. 
we got to figure out how to get around that machine, though. And he said, we got a lot of time to figure that out. But in the meantime, in between time, we got to get this money. So she tells him, she said, look, I can get whatever you need. I got the money to put up front first. And then once we start moving it, we got to make sure that the money's coming back up. So they set up all of the things, the logistical aspects of the game, right? You know, now, when I say the logistical aspects, I'm talking about the phone numbers that need to be called, the green dots, the, the cash app type things. It wasn't cash app back then, but you know what I'm talking about. Those types of things that you need to be able to process the payments. You feel what I'm saying? They set all of that up, right? They set all of that up. And then they figure out a way to how they're going to get money to the captain. They can't have no trail. It's all got to be cash. It's all got to be cash. You feel me? And then they got to pay the dude that they're going to put in play, that the captain's going to put in play at the x-ray machine. You see what I'm saying? So all of these things got to be done smoothly, without interruption. Because what he's talking about is taking over a whole penitentiary on the dope side. And he got the captain to help him do it. And it's not going to take long at all. They run their first move. Gal bring in the pack. The pregnant girl bring in the pack, right? And she tells the dude that, that she already knows is, is one of the brothers that she's pregnant. So he tells her to step to the side. He steps out of the booth and he tells one of the female officers to pat her down and take her in the back. And they take her in the back. They pat her down. Wait a couple of minutes because they showing each other favor. You feel me? And then they walk her right on through. No problem. She come through with the first pack. She she goes on the walk around with the captain. The captain is mad at first. He's nervous more than anything. They walk around and they see the gangster and they take it to his room and leave it in his room on his desk. And now we got action. We got action. And every day it's the same thing, the same move. Nobody's the wiser. Nobody knows what's going on. He got the family passing it out, issuing it out all over the compound. Money is rolling in hand over fist. They got weed. They got cocaine. They got it all. They got tobacco. They moving it. They moving it. They sewing everything up because they seem to be an unlimited supply because he's getting it every day. Nobody else can compete. Now, all of a sudden, everybody is coming to him trying to buy it wholesale versus retail so that they can get them a little money. But he ain't allowing it right now. So that drives the price up. They buying it from him wholesale, and then they got to figure out a way to sell it. They got to stretch it, y'all. And when I say they got to stretch it, they got to cut it. They got to get their money back some kind of way. Got to. But he's getting all the money. And now... The day comes where the captain's got to make a decision. They've been rolling a month and a half now, and the captain's got to make a decision. They're putting it on them. Look, you're either going to be part of this or we're going to have a problem. And he said, what's the benefit of me being a part of it? I stay like I am. We're good. He said, well, if you become a part of it, then we can in increase them benefits for you. You can start calling some shots on the compound, and we can make you look real good, get you moved up and get that top spot so he played to his ambition but the captain didn't have no intentions on becoming a warden or anything like that but he did like the idea of being able to make himself look real good because he was looking down the road he wanted to get a feather in his cap in case this thing goes south and he would be able to use that as his leverage one more favor before he gets kicked all the way out the door so to speak so he agrees to become a gangster. So they tell him to meet him. They tell him to meet him at one of the spots on the town. And then they're going to perform the ceremony. They're going to make him a gangster. Now the other brothers on the town, they're against it because they're looking at him like he the police. But bro in the penitentiary is telling them, look, this is going to benefit all of us in the long run. It's going to benefit all of us. But one thing they're not calculating is the captain's ambition. He knows it's only one way out. He gonna exercise it, and if you want to know what that way out is for him, you are gonna have to tune in to the next episode, right? <laughs> There's been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and I say peace, y'all.